if we take for the statins, for example, so this is a cholesterol owing drug, one of the most lucrative drugs in the history of medicine. Um, you know, it's a trillion dollar industry. And uh, the reality is when you break down the data, even from industry sponsored trials on statins, because most of this information comes from drug company sponsored trials. So it's likely an exaggeration, but even if we take that as gospel truth, if you are at say low risk of heart disease, i.e. you've not had a heart attack, um, then the chances of a statin benefiting you over a five year period based upon the trials that showed those benefits on an individual level are about 1%, one in a hundred. So what I would say to my patients, if I'm having a conversation with them about statins, for example, is I would say, listen, if you take this drug religiously every day for the next five years, there's a 1% chance it's going to prevent you having heart attack or stroke, but it will not prolong your life by one day because that, that, that isn't shown to be beneficial for mortality in low risk people. If you are high risk and particularly you've had a heart attack um, or you've had a, a, a stent put in or a severe blockage diagnosed, then that benefit increases to about one in 39 in preventing a further heart attack or a non-fatal heart attack, and one in 83 for mortality in terms of the one in 83 chance. That is what, this is what we call absolute risk reduction. That is exactly the way we should be telling patients about any intervention. And every patient's gonna react differently. Some of them are gonna say, I don't really fancy that doc, is there anything yeah. else I can do? And that's where you can come and talk about lifestyle, for example. Um, some will say, you know what, I don't mind taking that chance. Um, and, and that's what we should really be doing with patients is giving them that information in that way that's understandable. Yeah. Okay. People, are gonna, these are basic numbers that most people can understand. And then, um, you know, uh, accepting that decision and supporting them in their decision. And that's my approach to patients. Yeah. And it's not just something I advocate for. Um, in 2009, the World Health Organization put a bulletin out and it was authored by um, the man who's considered the leading person in the world in health and statistical literacy, Gerd Gigerenza from the Max Planck Institute in Berlin. Um, you know, very eminent professor in statistics. And, and he said it's an ethical imperative for every doctor and patient to understand the difference between relative and absolute risks to protect patients from unnecessary anxiety manipulation. It was reinforced in 2015 uh, by the Medical Royal Colleges, which is the organization that represents every doctor in the UK, in a paper that I, call, I was the lead author on with the chair of the GMC at the time, where we basically reiterated that as well. Right. Now, there's one thing having the knowledge and the, and the um, arguments behind that and the ethical considerations behind that. And there's another thing, making sure that it's widely implemented. And it hasn't been enforced in a way. And that's partly because um, there needs to be an education behind it as well. Most doctors are not taught in this way. Yeah. Okay. So that's something that happens, needs to happen through medical school and postgraduate medical education. But I think that um, there's a lot of barriers to implementing this because I think, obviously, if this was widespread in discussions, there'd be a massive reduction in medication uptake. And of course, that's going to hit the profits of an industry that's got more power than many governments across the world. And that's big pharma.